Well, this morning is a great morning to be here. Vacation Bible School has arrived, and you can see all of the hard work, and these are just a small glimpse of the work that has gone in as far as decorations and preparations and lesson plans and, and cookies and all of the like as we get ready to celebrate and to come together to have a great time this week at Vacation Bible School. As a child growing up here, I have many, many wonderful memories about Vacation Bible School. I, I can remember Alan Laguna leading the VBS songs and, and we would always sing, Booster, Booster, be a booster. Don't be grouchy like a rooster. And I can also remember other songs and one of the moments was, and if the devil doesn't like it, you can sit on attack. And we would sing those songs, including the word ouch, as loud as we possibly could. And what a wonderful moment in memory and fun that we had there. I can also remember when the, some of our members, the teachers, would dress up as Bible characters. I can remember Nick Crenshaw and I, I can remember the Conrads and others. They would get into costume to teach us the stories of the Bible. I, I can also remember that one year uh, Todd and Elizabeth Roberts won the award for bringing the most friends. You may recall that the Roberts had a big full-size van and it was either 7 or 17 that they fit into the van uh, that night, but I can remember they were getting that award. And of course, who could forget David Hutchins playing the role of Bible man flying out of the baptistry and teaching us a thing or two about what the Bible has to say. A few weeks ago, we were preparing for VBS and, and we shared a lesson that was entitled Staying on Track for VBS. And it was centered around the theme of all the board, the kingdom Express. And we introduce the lessons that are going to be a part of this program this week. It's talking about standing up, standing out, and being different. The story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We talked about how we we're going to be looking at how we as Christians can make good choices, as Daniel did in the story of the lion's den. We looked at how we're going to be thinking of others based on the story of Esther. How to choose the right friends based upon Mark chapter 2 and how we can put Jesus first, Luke chapter 10. And a few weeks ago we talked about how we can get ready for VBS as far as marking calendars and making a commitment. Inviting as many friends, using your talents and praying for the success of this Event. So all of the hard work, all of the preparation is here and is in place. And now we simply are asking all of you to be a part of that wonderful event. This morning our, our sermon is entitled, Are We Up For The Challenge? And it is going to be based out of the books of 1 John and... Second John. Will you turn your Bible with me to 1 John chapter 2? We already noticed at the very beginning of the sermon this morning that wonderful passage in 1 John chapter 1, verses 4 through 7, of how we as Christians have the opportunity to walk in the light, to have fellowship, and to have the cleansing of our sins through the blood of Jesus. And as we turn our attention this morning to 1 John chapter 2, we're going to be looking at three specific ways that we can be up for the challenge and how we can specifically show our love in our Christian faith. I'm in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 1. My little children... These things I write to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. 
and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. As we think about being up for the challenge, we see in these first six verses in 1 John chapter 2 that we can show our love, first of all, for Christ. Each are going to begin with the letter C. Showing our love for Christ. Are you showing your love for Christ every single day of your lives? I know you're expressing your love to Christ as you show up this morning to worship Him and to praise Him for saving us from our sins. But are you expressing and showing your love to Jesus Christ every single day of your lives? Expressing your love when you are at work or now that school is over when you're playing with your friends and when you're hanging out and, and when you don't have these typical responsibilities. Are you showing your love for Christ? As we look at this text, the, the 1 John 2, 1 through 6, there are several observations that can be made. The reason why we show our love to Christ is because the big fancy word propitiation, because of what he has done for us. What does that word mean? It basically it means it's he was a sacrifice, he was a substitute, he was a replacement for us. You see, we should have been crucified or we should have been lost for the sins that we've committed. But Jesus as propitiation or as replacement or as substitute, he took our place on the cross so that we would not have to experience that and so that we can have forgiveness of our sins. That is why we show our love for Christ is because what he has already done for us. And so how we show our love for Christ, the several items here, verse number three, we keep his commandments. We cannot show love to Jesus and disobey what he has to say. We may say that I love Jesus, but our actions reflect none of that in our lives. But we demonstrate our love of Christ and to Christ by keeping his commandments. And as we are keeping his commandments in verse number six, we are going to abide in him or we're going to continue with him walking after he walked. You see, expressing our love to Jesus is not just a one time expression. Yes, when we get baptized into Christ, repenting of our sins, we have those sins washed away. But that's only the beginning. It's only the first step. As we begin living that Christian life. So we express our love to Jesus by our obedience and by our continuing or abiding in our faith. And as we obey the Lord and as we abide in him, verse 5 talks about how we will be perfected in him. We will become more complete. We will mature. We will grow in our faith. And as we are becoming more perfected, more complete, we're going to notice that we are trusting in Jesus more and more every single day of our lives. And of course, Vacation Bible School is a wonderful way to express your love for Christ. Now, I realize that a part of probably the initial motivation has to do with all of the work, has to do with we want to put this on for the kids, and this is for the kids, and that is exactly right. But the reason why so much work has gone into this is, yes, it's for the kids, but it's helping our children 
and our adults to be able to show their love for Jesus Christ. As we continue in 1 John chapter 2, beginning in verse number 7, we're going to notice that not only do we have the opportunity to show our love for Christ, but we are up for the challenge as we show our love for the church. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 7, the Bible says, Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment, which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is always shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, Father, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. We, yes, show our love for Christ, but we also show our love for the church. How we treat our brothers and how we treat our sisters in Christ is very important. We all realize that the church is the people. The church is not the building, although we typically think of it as the building. But the church is the brothers and sisters in Christ. It is the people. And yes, we have the opportunity to walk in the light, having our sins forgiven. But John is reminding us that we have to show our love to the church. And that if we are hating our brethren, if we are not loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, then we are walking in darkness. Yes, it's important to show our love to Jesus, but we need to show our love to each other as well. And that is what we've been doing all along and getting ready for vacation Bible school. There are several, several people involved in putting this thing together. I, I think yesterday 35 people showed up to work and participate and, and many others have done some work ahead of time and, and will be doing some things this week. You see, a vacation Bible school is an opportunity for the church to come together, for us to express our love for each other and to our, express our love for God. And as we take a look at this text in these verses 7 through 14, we see that, yes, we cannot walk in light and hate our brother at the same time. And we also notice that as we look at this text here, that we want to abide, verse number 14, similar concept as we saw in verse number 6. And we may want to make sure that we do not cause anyone else to stumble, the end of verse number 10. You see, as we're expressing our love for one another, we are making sure we all continue, we all abide, we all are walking together. Walking in the light is not an individual aspect that only we are doing all by ourselves, but abiding and walking in the light is something we do together, and as we are walking together, we are not stumbling. We are there for each other, loving, 
and supporting each other when we need each other the most. It is very tempting, I realize that when things are tough, to stay away from everyone else. But I will tell you, and I was reminded in the last couple of weeks, that it is the church family, it is our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we need to surround ourselves with the most as life gets difficult. Because they are there to pick us up. They are there to encourage us. They are there to make sure we continue walking and not to stumble into darkness. How do you show your love for the church? It may through, be through VBS, it, it may be through some avenue, but the important thing is that, that each of us are being involved in the work of the church as we express our love to Christ and the church. Third and quickly and finally, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Scripture says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Are we up for the challenge? Well, we're up for the challenge by showing our love to Christ, showing our love to the church, and showing our love to the community. Because the world outside of Christ is lost. And the world, even though these items are passing away and are not our eternal, there are lusts in the world that people continue to pursue and follow after every single day, this lust of the flesh, this lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And as we show our love to the community, we are sending a loving message to them to say, we want you out of the world and in the church. Now we do that very kindly. We do that very uh, compassionately. We do that very lovingly. But the reason why the Lord's Church is not just focused on inward items of fellowship and worship is because there is a lost and dying world in our community around us. So yes, we have an inward focus, but we have an outward focus as well. We want to build up those who are already saved, but we want to reach out to those who are lost. And there are hundreds and thousands of people in our neighborhoods and in our communities that are still following after these lusts in the world. And hopefully, maybe in some small way this week, as we invite others to Vacation Bible School, we may be able to connect with them and bring them closer to the Lord and closer to the Lord's church. As we close this morning, there is a, a poem in your bulletin, and it's entitled, Are We Up For The Challenge? I did not write this poem. It was something that was uh, given to the church office in connection to what we are doing this week. But as you'll notice, Vacation Bible School, the acronym is spelled out. And I'd like to notice the, this uh, reading with you. At various times, we are called on to advance the cause of Christ in our community. Among those times is VBS. We all know it will take our time and effort in this event if this event is to be successful. I will determine if VBS is a failure or success. I will obey the Lord in all things so that no one can blame me for not doing my part. We believe that everyone should be involved in the Lord's church because the Bible instructs us to do so. If one member becomes lax, then it seems to leave an empty place that is never filled. And summing it all up, everyone should exemplify Christ in the way that they live 
realizing that Christians are to be holy in their walk with God, the work of the church is open and available to every Christian to give us the opportunity to serve Christ. Being a part of Vacation Bible School shows our love for Christ, the church, and our community. 2 John chapter 1, the final passage this morning, beginning in verse 1. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all those who have known the truth, because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had one from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. As I think back to all my wonderful memories of VBS, I am thankful for my parents for allowing me to be a part of such a wonderful event every single year. And I'm thankful for the church family for working together to put these items together. And as a parent now, I want my children to grow up walking in the truth and walking in the light. And I realize this is an enormous challenge, and that, by the way, is the challenge we've been talking about all morning, getting our children to walk in the truth and to walk in the light. Are you up for that challenge? I realize it's an enormous, daunting task, and it's often very scary, knowing all of the things going on in the world. But Vacation Bible School is just one small component that we can make sure that our children and our grandchildren are all about and a part of as we are training them and as we are teaching them to begin walking in truth now so when they grow older as adults, they can fully walk in the light, having their sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you walking in the light this morning? If you're not, then you can certainly become a Christian by putting your faith into Jesus, by repenting of sins, confessing faith, and being baptized into Christ to have those sins washed away. You may be a Christian and have fallen back into darkness and are ready this morning to come and begin walking in the light again. If we can help you in any way, will you come forward while we stand and while we sing together?